Hey everyone, and welcome back to Wall Street. Today's video is gonna be about the Angkor temples and the Khmer Empire. So I went there, of course, when I was in Cambodia. It's a must scene in Cambodia. You cannot go in Cambodia and not see those beautiful temples. Um, Angkor nowadays is the main attraction, tourist attraction in Cambodia. It brings over two millions of people each year. And yeah, I do understand why. When you see all of those beautiful temples, but not only, you also have some uh, big water structures and the roads, and you have like everything so full of history. You can really see those beautiful temples and you are like, how did they build that at that time, you know? It's beautiful, it's full of history, and oh, there is so much to say about that place. That's the reason why I'm gonna separate the video in several parts. So, I mean, I will do several videos, at least two, because there is a lot to cover about the history of uh, Angkor when it was the capital of the Khmer Empire. So in this video, I will start at the very beginning. So the rise of the empire had became like at that time a huge and very influential part. So I will cover from starting from 802 until 964 and then the rest is gonna be in future videos so two three videos i don't know yet but let's see let's deep into the subject hey guys so this morning i just went to the ticket office to have a map to plan and to see whether like in one day it was possible because like for Angkor Wat it's really expensive it's like 37 USD for one day and over 60 bucks for three days so I just went to take a map and to plan and actually they had an offer so for one day you have two days so for 37 bucks I have two days so this is just amazing I'm so happy so I just took my ticket starting tomorrow and yeah woo. Let's see those very, very old temples. See you. Let's start with the very beginning of the Khmer Empire. Everything started in 802 when a very extremely ambitious king, Jaya Bauman II, unified the kingdom. So before its reign started, he met some alliances with local politicians in exchange of probably some lands or power. He was very determined to free the country from Yava. Yava doesn't refer to the island, but it was the kingdom of Srivijaya, sorry for the pronunciation, so Srivijaya on the island of Sumatra. What is agreed in history is that Java was an aggressive power. When he got enough support from the people across the region, he declared not only religious and political liberation of the people from Java, but he also claimed himself to be the ruler. He's not only a king, but a god king. And before his rule, there were a lot of fights among, among the locals, overlords who ruled different parts of Cambodia. But he really managed to unify the kingdom and bring a more peaceful era among the locals. He built the city at the very first temple that will be the heart of the Khmer Empire for the next 500 years. However, the capital of the Khmer Empire wasn't always in Angkor. So in 928, Jaya Varman IV, the new king, moved to the capital in Koker. And Koker is not so far from Angkor, it's just over there, as you can see on the map. Jaya Varman IV did not conduct one single war. In support of his new political ideology that went from Raja, or king, to Rajya, or the kingdom and its people. His reign was the most tranquil period of the entire Khmer Empire, which allowed for a cultural revival. 
During his reign, he constructed numerous Hindu shrines as well as economic infrastructure like roads and irrigation systems. Apparently, uh, it has been found by historians that he used some new technology for the irrigation system and basically all the um, water structures. Let me show you some shoots that I took from Coquer. As you can see, there is some archaeologists who are just taking out some stuff from the ground, I guess. In front of the main uh, Kokera temple. So I didn't stop before. <laughs> At the stop, I had to take the ticket. I didn't know, but I, had to, I just paid fifteen dollars uh, now. And yeah, this is really nice. very impressed about those places to imagine how the people were living over there and this used to be the capital at the time for a quick period of time and yeah this is impressive look at that really really nice there is a way up to the top so let's wet even more up to get to that point of view. Oh, this is nice. I'm gonna sweat. That's why right. I'm already so sweaty. I can't imagine myself after all of those steps I've to the top. But as I said, it's all my fault. Oh, a butterfly. Hey, you. Are you gonna bring me luck? Okay. Looks quite. Seems quite. Alright on the hand. Okay. Let's see if you're still there at the top of the temple. Okay. We're at the top. And see, my friend is still here. And there is still an archaeological site over there. Let me talk to him. Let's talk to him and see what his experience is. But the other thing is, he got a lot, lot longer legs in here because he's. But unfortunately, when Jaya Varman the Fourth passed away, his son took over briefly the power. He ruled for two or three years maximum, and it was really not in a peaceful um, place. And the the system was pretty conflictual when he was ruling. So that's why his cousin, uh, King Rajendra Varman II, took over the power, and he moved back the capital to Angkor, and this was in 943. So I started my day with a really nice sunrise in Strasrang that was built during the reign of this exact same king, Rajendra Varman II. So if you are looking also, if you go over there in Angkor, go visit the temples, you have several options to get to see the sunrise. And I decided to go there because it was really less tourist. So let me show you some shots that I took from over there. But if you want to really stay 
out of the crowd, I really advise you to see the sunrise over there. Really not many tourists. Hey, good morning, Megan. So we are right now in Sfersay. Sfersay is uh, was built around the mid 10th century, and it had some um, renovation on the 12th century to add the terrace and several things too. Um, the bath, as you can see, it is about like 700 by uh, 350 meters, which is a lot. It's actually kind of a small uh, marais. marais. Uh, what else can I say about that place? Uh, it means royal bath. So at first the history, the people thought that it was only for the king and the spouse because it's really romantic though, like to just walk around. But uh, after some research, they found some inscription uh, that the, uh, from the 10th century that people just said that it was for all the well, like the, uh, the, the bath was for the well of all creatures. Okay, and I hope that you really enjoyed the video and I would like to, sorry for that, to thank all of you because we are already nearly 200 on that channel within less than two weeks it's awesome so thank you to any one of you and don't forget to subscribe because now i can see the statistic and there is a lot of you that are not subscribed and are still watching my video so please subscribe put a like if you like the video and i'll tell you see you soon because there is a lot of stories to tell and many experiences to live Cheers!